Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to, I would say my portion of the vlog, of the vlog but this is kind of our portion. We're uh, with our buddy Nick. You guys so, recognize Nick, right? Um, so uh, we've been out there a couple times hunting this place in Hawaii and he actually made the trip. He's kind of on a honeymoon trip with his wife. And uh, he was welcome at my house, stayed at my house last night. We cooked elk steak dinner. And now we just pulled up to Wild Arrow to uh, get his bow set up and tuned um, because he's got obviously axis deer and all kinds of hunting um, in his homeland, but he's got a killer elk tag, mm -hmm. archery elk tag this year in New Mexico. So we're gonna get him dialed. We're gonna take you guys with us in a wild arrow. Let's do the dang thing. Let's get it done. Gorgeous sunny day in Salt Lake, guys. We have, uh, we have just been blessed with some good weather lately. And we've come down here early to give these guys a head start working on Nick's bow. The team at Wild Arrow, man, they're the best. They treat us so good and they always take care of us. Two going? dozen arrows? Two dozen Some arrows. Good. So these are the FMJ four millimeter with the hush white veins or white veins and blue veins with hush white wraps. Nice. Get them all dialed. Those are some axis deer lung darts, huh? Yeah. Those are your colors? Yeah. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> Perfect. Forgot. Hi, Hello. Hello. Welcome. What's up, man? Welcome to Archery. Nice to meet you. you you're the new guy? Mm -hmm. You're the new bow build guy we're doing? The FNG. FNG. The FNG. The new guy. FNG guys. They're never, they're never different. They're all the same. So, Nick, one of the things he's wanted to get done is get a new bow that is actually professionally tuned and set up because Nick has had a Matthews bow and he bought it shipped it in and he like set everything up himself right nick yeah pretty much <laughs> so that's the plan today cody's gonna help us get nick all dialed we got him two dozen arrows like you've seen so we're gonna get those set up too but he should be ready to go terrorize his homeland with archery equipment so cody's the man today on the wrenches and we are here to document greatness Cord. I gotta put the cord in. We got it leveled, we got it squared, we got the rest tied in as far as the felt goes. So now we're just gonna install the rest cord, time it up, fire it through paper, see what happens. Yeah, there's a lot of ways. He showed up. Hey guys. That was a long one. Dude. Dude. Pulled the Can Am down for the boys. We uh, I think I think these guys have some summer scouting plans for some uh, future things coming up. But yeah, got average like six MPGs. Dude, there was an F-150 behind me for the last like 15 miles. Could have sworn it was you. I was like, why is Matt coming from the north? It was a chick. Sick. Curly That's hair. Sick. <laughs> so I like to put my finger over the trigger, get on target, and then I start to just apply pressure. And I'm slowly building tension into the release. But because my finger is hooked, it's what's setting it off. Versus sitting there stagnant and trying to just squeeze it as absolutely slow as you can. Everybody's different. You can shoot it however you want. I don't care as long as you're consistent. That's the biggest part. But certain ways do lead to bad habits and bad tendencies and anticipation. So if we can start you out with the right placement with your hand mm -hmm. and your finger, then when you start to execute, it'll just feel more natural. See how this thing fits. I'm just gonna look at your draw length. So I'm gonna inspect you a little bit. Look at your shoulder <laughs> position, see where your arms are at, see where your body's at, see how it feels. And then we'll go from there. And then once we get that done, we'll dive into cutting your arrows, making sure that those fit in the draw length we choose. Then we'll paper tune with your arrows cut so that we're tuning to the right size. So it's 90 pounds. This key, 63 and a half. Roll that hand out just a little bit right there. Perfect. How's it feel? Good. Looks pretty good. I think 30 and a half is a pretty nose, good, yeah, the nose pretty good spot. Looks good. Yep. Yeah, you look good there. So reach over, feel where that trigger's at reach even farther if you can. Good curl on it like that. 
Now just slowly start applying pressure. Oh wow, that's Dang. different. Fast, right? I'm used to like the finger pull. You don't have to think about it, it just goes. So huh. in, a, in a shooting situation, the less you have to think about, the better. Yeah. So if I can draw, I get anchored. As soon as I get on the animal, finger rolls to the trigger, and then all I tell myself is pull, 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 but, and it goes. I'm not thinking about any other thing. I'm not thinking about like pin movement and floating and squeezing and oh, just aim, just let the pin be there and just pull, 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 boom. And that shot fires before you know it. You got an arrow launched and you're like, oh my gosh, I just hit that elk. Like it was crazy. So that looks good. That's good stuff. So one thing that these guys helped me with years ago was changing from like a really long release to where like my finger would barely hit like the lever. And so you're kind of like slapping it or like flicking it, right, to go off. And they shortened up my release to where now my finger can really hook around the release. And instead of pulling the trigger, you actually pull with your back. You just hook it really good and it just kind of surprises, surprises you. So, like, did it feel short at yeah, first? Felt, felt short. But once you do that in your hand. Yeah, see. I can't remember where mine was, but I want to say I it's kind of that first shoot. I honestly just shortened yours up a little bit. Now. Dude just yeah. decided to let the let probably yeah. 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 We've got everything dialed. We just got to put a backer bar stabilizer on Nick's bow and he's coming back to shoot. We have a 30 yard indoor range so we can get his sight set up. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that now. There's Nick right there with the new bow. What do you think? Badass. Hello. Tell us what we're doing. We're firing arrows. So we just got this bow set up for him. Um, draw link set, bow's tuned, everything's ready to roll, so now it's the sight-in process. So we're going to have him fire one up close just to see where it gets for a ballpark. Back up to 20, dial it in, print a sight tape, golden. Get your hand set, we'll work the peep straight as we shoot. Good curl over that trigger. Okay, in the middle. That sounded good. It was there. You rush it a little bit. You got a little itchy, but we hit the paper, so that's good. Now we'll back up to 20 and fine tune a little bit. I wish I had a 30 and a half inch draw length shooting an arrow like this, because it almost blew through the whole wall. <laughs> Can I go there? It's so do everything exactly the same. A little easier on the trigger. Take your time a little bit. Cool. High left, let me see your sight. 80 like it's nothing. Do the same thing, easy on the trigger. Take your time, slow pull. Boom. That'll look. Oh yeah. Left and your right's good. Let me see, let me see your bow. I'll let you pull those arrows out because I'm tired of pulling them out, they penetrate so far. <laughs> Wear my arms out. Oh yeah. Let's do this in three shots if we're good enough. Let's see. Dude, those flip I moved the clicks right. Tried to get him good this time. Oh, it's so close! Shoot another one. Let's shoot a group. It's gonna be super fun when he rips all your fletchings off that you had to spend hours fletching and you're gonna have to do it again. Uh -huh. Your other two are right there. So your group is awesome. This is a bad one. That was the one that we knew you jerked. But when you execute and you just let it do its thing, that's your group. So I'll move it. Swing. Out of boy. Out of boy, Nick. Okay, so now that you're sighted in, I'm gonna go shoot it through the chronograph, and then we're gonna cut a tape, and then we'll install a tape on there, and I'll show you what all the pins are gonna do. How fast are we shooting? 298 feet per second. Oh my gosh. Let's weigh this arrow. That's unreal. You're gonna be able to shoot through a tree. Yeah. That's that's unreal. Like I figured, I figured it would be. 
fast, but not like that fast because this is a heavier arrow. No wonder they're burying in the target. 515 grains doing 298 feet per second. <laughs> that's, that's, okay, you're good. That's plenty. <laughs> yep, you're elephant qualified. <laughs> Dude, white tail. Guys, check it out. These are Delta McKenzie targets. True life. True life. Um, let's see, 28 by 42 like pictures that you can shoot at. So we're gonna take one of these to my backyard and put it on my big backdrop, which is per like this literally built for this. So I'm trying to find an elk, but I think they're sold out. I got a mule deer. Yeah, we got some mule deer. So we're gonna take these back home. We're done here with Nick's bow. Thanks to Cody and the team at Wild Arrow always hooking us up. Um, but yeah, let's go to my house and shoot this thing. Yeah. Guys, what's up? Uh, welcome back to another Hush Life vlog. Hope you are having a really fantastic day today on this Monday. We, uh, we missed last week because a lot of people have been traveling. So apologize for uh, missing last week, but figured uh, walk you guys through kind of my archery setup. Uh, I've been shooting two different bows. So I've been shooting the Hoyt Venom Pro which is the Hoyt aluminum riser model. And so far, I've really enjoyed that. I took it to Hawaii, uh, which we'll have that video series here, hopefully later in the month of July. Really enjoyed shooting that one. The Venom from last year was uh, probably one of my favorite bows I've ever shot. So this one is right in line. I'm digging it. I'll kind of walk you through that setup real quick. Okay, so I've got the uh, tight spot quiver. It is a five arrow quiver. I've run these for a lot of years. This is got the buckskin riser. And then I was able to get the first light fusion on the limbs, which I think turned out really nice. I currently have the Trueball Excel Landslide, and you can kind of see this allows you to adjust your sight accordingly. I will say the one thing I don't love about this particular sight setup is here is like your stopper. So a lot of times when you're rolling your pins, you know, your top pin, you would kind of want that right against the bumper. There is a bit of a gap in where my 30 yard pin kind of resides. And because of the way it's spaced, there's no additional room to make an adjustment there. So I don't love that, frankly. I wish that was a little different. I think that red stopper ought to be able to slide anywhere on here, depending on the way your housing is set up. So then we are running the Hamski Epsilon Limb Driven Rest, which is new to me this year, but so far by all accounts, things are going good. And then this is the uh, UltraView UV3 scope and it's got the two pin setup uh, for hunting. So this one does turn on and off from lighting. So in the states that you can use the battery operated stuff, it's all set. If for whatever reason, you know, your state does not allow that, you can just take that off and it's still fiber optic sight there. So you're good to go either way. Kind of see, I've got the sight tape that I've put together after kind of verifying. And I got a bee stinger, uh, eight inch, back bar coming off to balance out the weight of this side. From an arrow standpoint, these are the Easton Axis uh, long range, so they're the four millimeter diameter shaft. And then I've got the fluorescent orange. I've got the four fletch AAE hybrid 26 veins, and then the fluorescent orange wraps that we sell as well. So that is the setup for the Hoyt Venom Pro. So far, I've been super impressed. I really have enjoyed uh, shooting it, get more comfortable with it. The arrow setup is uh, really the same one I've been running the last couple years. So it's coming in at like 475 uh, grains total weight. Half out uh, inserts on the front, which are like 50 grains, and then the field tip is 150. I'll be shooting, uh, like I have been the last few years, the Valkyrie uh, Short Blood Eagles, uh, 150 grains. So far, I've really liked them. It's not their center pin system, but it is a good alternative that kind of flies good for me with the current setup I have. And uh, I'm shooting the same arrow profile in both the Venom Pro and the RX-7. So uh, the only difference is like the fletching colorations. So I'll show you what the uh, RX-7 is currently set up like and what I got going on there. It is a little bit different than what I have on the Venom Pro. So I've kind of have two different styles that I'm playing around with and kind of at the end of the day, give me an option to decide which one I want to take uh, on what type of hunting scenario. Okay, this is the uh, Hoyt RX-7, it's our carbon model. Got it in the blackout edition with the flow yellow string, running a black tight spot quiver, same exact as my other one, five arrow. Like I mentioned, the only difference on the arrow profile setup is 
the colors of the veins and the wraps. Both bows are set up too with the new Hoyt ghost sticks, which are great for just setting things up when you're target practicing. This also has an eight inch uh, back bar. It's the Hoyt variety uh, by Fuse. Coming on up, also I've got the Hamsky Epsilon limb driven rest on this one. But the big difference here is the Garmin Zero Sight. This one is made specifically by Hoyt for Hoyt bows. And it's got the pick a teeny system on the front and it's pretty interesting. So you can kind of see, uh, I'm trying to give you an idea of what it looks like when you depress the range finding button, which is located right here on the handle and it just connects on up to the sight housing. So when you draw your bow back, you're gonna press that and you're gonna have the uh, illuminated reticle pop up in your scope window. So I've only just got this set up. Uh, it was recommended by a lot of different folks for a few different reasons. And again, it goes back and forth, the age old question, the debate of what is too much technology? And man, that's that's one I think we could argue about for days. The advent of the centerfire rifle, the, uh, you know, the optic capabilities that we have, range finding, ballistic systems, it really, the list goes on and on and on. And I don't know what the right answer is. I think it's an individual choice. You gotta pick what you think suits your style obviously that aligns with the proclamation, the rules or regulations of different states. Again, in some places this site uh, wouldn't be legal, but then in other places it would be. Uh, I've only shot it for a little bit. When you put, when you draw your bow back, you press the, the, the button. It's going to bring up um, a small red dot with a green donut circle around it. That's going to like be your range finder. So on your target, whether it's stationary or moving, it's going to acquire the range. And then when you release that button, it's gonna drop a green pin, for me anyways, uh, the color I selected, on the target of choice. That will become your ranged sight, which then you'd wanna continue your shot process, you know, and execute a good shot. So the advantages in that case would be certainly sitting in a tree stand, whitetail hunting, when you got a buck coming in, moving around, chasing a doe, you kind of know a certain range, but if you get a little bit further out there, while you're at full draw, it eliminates the need to have to go make another range uh, on you know a typical range finder and then adjust your slider potentially um, and it kind of can do it all in one and be more proficient so the benefits would be um, certainly being able to get a shot off a little bit quicker more ethical hopefully not misjudging uh, a yardage and making a poor shot i could also see it uh, be effective in like ch run and gun elk hunting so you got a bugle and bull coming in, you range the opening at 35 yards, comes in and then he starts quartering away. And sometimes that's hard to decipher uh, where are they. So you guess for 35 or maybe you guess for 40 and the animal is actually at 51, you end up missing the shot or you hit it bad. So I think there's some situations and circumstances where it would be beneficial, but I can also see uh, why certain states maybe don't have it allowed because of the capabilities within it. So kind of goes back and forth. Um, again, I'm barely just starting to shoot it, so I don't know how much I love it yet. The thing that I would say I've noticed out of the gate is once you kind of get beyond 35 yards and it starts dropping the pin, it goes, you'll be, your your uh, initial range will be acquired on the target, right? And if it's at like 60 yards, the pin that's gonna drop will naturally be below that initial pin because if you noticed the red dot is at the very top of the sight housing so you have to make an adjustment you've got to compensate either by raising your arm which creates poor habits and less consistency or really you have to like pivot your hips kind of back to get that new 60 yard pin on your point of aim some things to work through uh, everybody said that's kind of uh, something you got to be aware of when you first start shooting the garmin and you gotta adjust accordingly. Uh, anyways, guys, that is my archery setup update. I'm uh, in my backyard getting in some reps on this beautiful sunny morning. About ready to go board a plane, head to the Midwest for a few days for a very important package pickup. I'll keep you all in the loop on that as, as we get a little bit further down the road here, but we uh, are very excited about this specific package to pick up. 
That's what I know about that. Got the targets down yonder. So I've got a pronghorn 3D target, a small mule deer target from Delta McKenzie, and then a black kind of foam with an orange dot on it. 36 yards is what the old Garmin is saying. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you guys for the continued support, and we'll catch up with you next Monday. fish on. It's been about 10 minutes or so. Oh, whoa. That kind of looks prone. You feel like it's not coming in at all? No. Okay, now we're gonna... Better? Yeah. All right, stop. Okay, real. Oh. Yeah, it's nice and easy. Fighting hard, huh? Yeah. Could be a coke me for how hard it's fighting. Looks like another rainbow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a slab of a rainbow. <laughs> Holy crap. You want me to do it? I think I got it. Watch that second hook, it's a real doozy. Got a double, guys. Holy Hannah, Aubrey. Dripping drag. Oh, that's red. Holy. That's a fat flipping fish there. Look at that fish, guys. Strip and drag. Well, me and the wife got a double. Um, about a 15, 16 inch rainbow. She's got one that's probably a little bit bigger.
Nice. Oh, man. I'm the netter. I Normally when they jump like that, babe, they're kokanee. But that has not been the case. I hope we didn't get up. No, we still there. <laughs> How do you freaking work this net? It's too high tech for Aubrey. Oh, hey. Please be a kokanee. This is a kokanee. It's going to be the greatest day ever. Is it? I don't know what they look like. I only know what they They're look like. They're super silver and they kind of have a blue back, you know, as a rainbow. Oh! Woo! Damn. I was horsing him. Another nice rainbow, guys. That just almost got stuck in the back of my head. I know. He almost pulled a Zachary. I fly fished it out of the way. <laughs> Alright, guys. So I'm out here with my sweetheart. This is her second time on the boat, but first time just her and I. And we got our dog, a German Shepherd, right there with us. And we are trying to catch Kokanee, but all we're catching are some stud rainbows, which I am not complaining about. So we got a lot of marks on Fish Finder right now. So hopefully we can hook up to a fish here shortly. But as you've seen, we've got a couple good rainbows already. And hopefully it's just the beginning. It's we still have like three hours till sunset, but I don't know that we'll fish till dark. Oh, right there. You're kidding? Here, baby. Got her. I just have to be distracted is all, apparently. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool Yep, and then just try and keep your rod away from this line a little bit. Call me dumb. You need a big one. There it is. Another rainbow. Oh, you're. Okay, you got them a little close to the boat. Yeah. Well, I try not to, but. Caught another rainbow. They're lively suckers. They're nice and pretty fish. Super healthy. He's ready to rock and roll. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. You sound like your dad. <laughs> Double coming into the boat ramp. Holy sh! This one is so big.
not to. Okay guys, we just had a triple <laughs> on our way back to the boat ramp. Holy cow. Three stud rainbows. I'll pull them out one by one and release them. So this was the last one that just came in. Not a bad little rainbow. Oh, that one just got hit. Oh, there. right there. Oh, here. Yeah. Well, we got a quadruple. <laughs> this was the last rod in the water and we just hooked up. Okay, just set it back in there for a second. You're rolling still? Got it. Yeah, this was the next one. Just fat, healthy fish. A sweet fish. Get a good release. There he goes. Last fish. Another big old rainbow. Right there. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to end on that note. Thanks for tuning in to a quick little fishing episode. Hopefully, you'll see a lot more of my wife. I'm sure you will. But, uh, gotta go home, put the kid to bed. But that was a fun hour, hour and a half of fishing. Action packed and uh, can't wait to get back out here and try to find something.